sponsored by Brilliant. There have been a few more spoilers around Apple's next less expensive iPhone, what's previously been referred to as the iPhone SE2 or iPhone 9. And even though I've already done an entire video explaining what I think it'll be and why, there still seems to be some confusion out there around both of those things. So I'm gonna try again, but different. Instead of rehashing the rumors, I'm gonna go through what I think the announcement will actually be. And hopefully that'll cut down on the expectational debt and make things just a little clearer. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. Flashback to the fall of 2014 and Apple introduced the big 4.7 inch iPhone 6 and the bigger 5.5 inch iPhone 6 Plus. What Apple didn't introduce back then was an updated four inch iPhone. Fall of 2015, same thing, iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus. But then in the spring of 2016, Apple did a couple of things they'd never done before. Not only announce another new iPhone in the spring, but announce a back to the future style iPhone with the SE. Same four inch design as the 5S, most of the new internals and cameras from the iPhone 6S, but at an all new, all lower price. That let Apple address two markets at once, people who wanted a less expensive iPhone and people who wanted a smaller iPhone. Now, Apple is widely expected to return to that playbook again, this time with the same 4.7 inch design as the iPhone 8, most of the new internals and cameras from the iPhone 11 and retain that lower price. If you're salty, it's not rumored to have a more modern iPhone 10 style design or any new design at all, look up. That's the point just flying right over your head, mist and everything. Because once again, this phone isn't meant or priced for people who want new things. It's meant for people who want the low, low price and the return of the home button. Anything that changes any of those things just ain't it for them. So here's how I expect it to go. And this is just pure speculation, but Apple is an extremely logical, rational company. So it may actually end up being fairly accurate. Tim Cook, Apple CEO comes out, says, <laughs> Good morning! Maybe talk services, maybe other products, but eventually we get down to the iPhone. That's when Greg Joswiak, Jaws, Vice President of Product Marketing takes the stage, or maybe Kyan Drance, Vice President of iPhone Marketing. We'll hear how much customers are loving the iPhone 11 and how the vast majority of Apple's customers are head over heels over the modern design and features like Face ID. But for this event, Apple wants to talk about something else, their home button iPhones. Turns out customers love those as well and continue to buy tens of millions of them every year. For many of those people, the home button iPhones are the very first iPhone they get, their first experience with Apple's hardware, software, and now services integration. Outside North America, in emerging markets, the majority of first time customers might even still be going for home button iPhones, which is why some customers may have asked Apple to please, pretty please, keep home button iPhones in their lineup. So maybe Apple is gonna do just that and make it a whole lot better, as we may have heard with the iPhone 9. Now, the iPhone SE got something no iPhone 5S ever did, Apple's then new rose gold finish. Whether the iPhone 9 sticks to silver and space gray, gets the current coppery gold, or maybe even takes a page from the iPhone 10R or 11 and gets a colored model, we'll have to wait and see. If Apple sticks to every page of the iPhone SE playbook, then we'll also hear how people love playing graphically intensive games on their iPhones. So the iPhone 9 will get the latest generation A13 Bionic chipset, giving it the same processing performance as the iPhone 11 and amazing battery performance to go with it, along with wireless charging. Since people love taking photos with their iPhones as well, the iPhone 9 will get Apple's most advanced camera as well, the new wide angle from the iPhone 11 with 100% focus pixels, updated smart HDR, quick video, that single lens portrait mode system, maybe even night mode. And of course, 4K60 extended dynamic range video with the latest generation selfie, and sure, Slofi camera to go with it. No 5G, of course, like most of the world still, but Wi-Fi 6 and even the U1's ultra wideband radio for spatial positioning. And it'll still have the Touch ID some people love and prefer. Works great with Apple Cart, of course. It'll meet all of Apple's environmental standards as well. Maybe even be the first iPhone made of 100% recycled aluminum. That's totally a spitball on my part, but I'd love to see it. Now, 
maybe I'm wrong about a lot of this, all of it. Maybe Apple can't hit the low, low price point they really want to hit with the iPhone 9 by going with the guts of the iPhone 11. If that's the case, then maybe they'll go with the guts of the iPhone XR instead. That means it would still be fast, just not quite as fast, still have a single lens portrait mode system, but not night mode, and Wi-Fi 6 and U1 would be up in the air as well. Either way though, Apple will be able to say something they haven't been able to say since 2017, that it's the most powerful home button iPhone ever. And it'll start, again, all less expensive iPhone playbooks being equal, at just $399. And if that doesn't make any sense to the usual tech pundits, the ones who just can't help but judge everything by the raw specs, then I'm sorry. So very sorry, but it's not for them anyway. And let's be honest, they'll be fine. They'll be getting an iPhone 12 to find boring and skippable just later this year, just like they did the iPhone 11 Pro last year until they actually held it and started using it. This phone is for everyone else, for everyone who couldn't care less about specs and just wants a phone they feel comfortable using, one that makes them happy. Because it's never really about the numbers, it's about the equation those numbers are put in. And for any tech pundits who may need a little bit of extra help with that, there's Brilliant. Take the complete math course library, please. It's perfect for students, for schools, for professionals, for anyone who wants to brush up on advanced areas or just learn something new, like algebra, geometry, and calculus from beginning to end, or jump in anywhere in the middle. Brilliant is a problem-solving based website and app with a hands-on approach with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. Through it all, Brilliant puzzles you, surprises you, and expands your understanding of the modern world. And all of Brilliant's courses have storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, and problems to solve. The best resolution you can make this year is investing in your STEM skills. So go to brilliant.org vector and finish your day just a little smarter every day. Thanks Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Now, Apple could totally mix things up. Maybe there won't even be an iPhone 9. I've already told you what I think, but it's time to tell me what you think. So hit like if you do, subscribe, and one more thing, that bell gizmo, so YouTube will actually tell you when new videos go live, then hit up the comments and let me know. What do you think we'll see with the iPhone 11? And what do you want to see? Thanks for watching. See you next video.